Hello there and welcome to Everything Coptic. On Sunday in the Gospel, we read about a young rich ruler who came to our Lord Jesus Christ and said, Good teacher. And how did the Lord respond? He said, No one is good but God. You might be wondering, Jesus is God. So why would he chastise or correct the young rich ruler for calling him good? If God is good and Christ is God, then Christ is good. The young rich ruler did not recognize that the Lord is God. He only saw him as another man. And in correcting his understanding, he says, no, 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 no. As a human being, I cannot be good, because it's only through God can someone be good. But through Christ, through God, we can be good. And how is that? It's the case that the Lord, in emptying himself, in taking our flesh, takes upon our nature, and makes our nature rich in his own. This is our idea of Christ emptying himself, that he didn't lose anything that he is, but rather he took on the poverty of our nature. But now let's meditate for a few moments. And today's meditation will be the definition of good, and I'm not going to go to a Webster's Dictionary or anything like this, We'll just look at good and its simplest component. And if we could come along on this meditation, there could be a positive and a negative side of good. So what's the negative aspect? The negative aspect is good, meaning lacking that which is bad. Good as absence of that which is bad. And that might seem like a pretty lame definition, really. But if you think more about it, you think about the way we approach fasts and the way we approach anything else, that definition of good is accurate to our condition, if you would. What, what do I mean by that? Sometimes we think, oh, well, you know, it's the fast. I, I need to do good. And then what do we do? We abstain from evil, which I, I think that's good to abstain from evil. But then there's no subsequent action. It's just, I'm going to try to refrain. And if we do evil, then we feel, oh, well, you know, I did, I did something bad. But do you see the crux of this? It's, it's determinate upon whether or not we're doing bad things. Now, this will make more sense when we say the positive definition of good, and please forgive me for the circular definition, but good in its positive sense is being filled with actions of goodness. Being filled with actions of goodness. Now, it, it, it sucks because it's circular. But when goodness, or rather when good is defined by good actions, then we find good in a positive. And what does that mean? Good is defined then by those things that we do. Virtuous things godly things. And that's where the definition stops being circular and starts having a point. The Lord says, no, no one is good except for God. Well, okay, then apply that to the definition. It's no longer circular. Goodness means being like God. Because if God is good and you are like God, then aren't you good? And we know, obviously, that no man can be good, except through God. And this is participation through the sacraments, through baptism, and communion, repentance, etc., that we can be good. And if you notice there, those are actions. Those are things that you go and you do. So it doesn't just involve sitting idly, not doing evil. What does it say about uh, a man who had an unclean spirit? The spirit leaves... And he comes back and he finds the, the mind 
which, which is try to repent, perhaps, he finds this mind, it's very clean, much cleaner than when he had been there pr uh, previously. So he comes and he brings seven demons greater than him, and they reside in there. If we try to clean our minds just by removing that which is evil, the evil will return much greater than before and will overtake it. What we need to do is we need to fill our minds with with goodness. And well, how, how can we do that? This is through contemplation. This is through prayer. This is through reading the Bible. This is through loving others and praying for others. This is through, in your throughout your day, thinking and being cognizant of other people and being aware of God's presence. There's a lot that goes into this, but the main point is we are actively doing something versus refraining from something. A positive definition versus a negative definition. I, I hope that was helpful. The main application here is during our fast, we refrain from eating certain things. We refrain from activities, but we need to do activities, acts of mercy, things like this, uh, more prayers, more Bible reading, care for others, visit the sick in the hospital, uh, be caring for our friends, family, strangers whoever, attend church, attend when we start kiak, attend uh, if we have the weekday services or even just the Saturday night uh, kiak 7-4 service, attend these things. Go to the Lord's house and visit him and take communion, be united with him. St. Paul, when he instructs uh, a thief to repent, he doesn't just say stop stealing. He says start working with your hands and give. Do something to turn your life around. So I pray during this fast, through participation with our Lord Jesus Christ, because no one can be good but God, through participation, may we learn about his goodness. May we imitate such goodness to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom is due all glory and honor with his good Father and the Holy Spirit. And glory be to God forever. Amen. <laughs>